to the Coast Guard Festival. It start, started yesterday, as I understand it. That runs through the weekend, but it's sort of a two-weekend, one-week sort of thing. But yesterday was an important day because uh, some of the ships came in, and uh, it's, a, it's a great pageant. In fact, uh, flags in hand, thousands of people lined the channel there as the uh, towering United States Coast Guard cutter sailed into port. And that is it, that what signifies the unofficial start of the Coast Guard Festival. Annie, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, we're underway. So if someone's listening right now and they've never been to Grand Haven to the Coast Guard Festival, what can they expect? Oh, they can expect a community that comes together to honor the men and women of the Coast Guard with different events all throughout the week, um, waterfront shows at the boardwalk, just Basically, anything you can imagine, and also a carnival going on the entire time. Tim, have you been, uh, you're a West Michigan guy, been to the Coast Guard Festival? No, I haven't, but I've heard so many great things about it, and I know a lot of people uh, travel there uh, because it's such a spectacular event, and they do such a nice job over there. So congratulations, and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Is there any advice on parking? Because uh, Grand Haven can get pretty jammed up, can it? Yes, absolutely. Parking's always an issue, but um, during the week we have parking on the outskirts. You could, it's really not that big of a deal to find parking during the week. On the weekend, which is Saturday, August 1st, it's our day that we have our grand parade. We have a show at the waterfront and then the fireworks. That day is the toughest. So what I suggest is look on our website under Park and Ride or look on Harbor Transit's website, and you will see there are different shuttles from even Ferrysburg, Spring Lake, different spots in Grand Haven that you can park, and there is round-the-clock shuttles from 9 a.m. until after the fireworks. So do not try to drive into Grand Haven on August 1st. Take a shuttle. What's the web address for people who want to check it out ahead of time? The, our web address is coastguardfest.org. Okay. Any security, special security issues, given the, the nature of things these days? Um, you know, nothing abnormal. Same kind of security that we have in years past. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a great event. It's always such a fun time, family event. So I just suggest everybody to take a look at our website and bring the family out. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, mention our name in Grand Haven, as JP used to say. And Jamie can finish the line. Just don't tell them where we are. Michigan State Police will have five troopers and one sergeant in Muskegon Heights, not too far from Grand Haven. They're at all times. They've got a designation now as one of the Michigan State Police's five secure cities. And that uh, designation is due to crime statistics. Muskegon Heights, uh, where we're heard on the radio, has per capita crime similar to Detroit, Flint, and Saginaw. Come and on. So Colonel Etchu has uh, encouraging residents not to give up. You've got a great city there, and so they only have 18 officers, and they get 20,000 calls every year, so the Michigan State Police is going to help out there in Muskegon Heights, where we're heard on WKBZ 1090 AM. There's no, there's no crime in Muskegon. There, there might not be now that the State Police are coming in there to help out in a, in a little bit of a collaborative. How